Well, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Northampton Planning Board meeting of Thursday, April 14th, 2022. Um, there are a couple of items on the agenda. One is an application um, from 26 Herald Street in Florence. And another one is a public forum on the Florence streetscape plan. Um, but first, as we traditionally do, we're gonna open the meeting up and ask people if there's any public comment um, not related to either of those two items. Public comment on other things that may be appropriate for the planning board. Feel free to come up to the podium. Okay, hearing none, then we will, we're gonna take a very quick business item so it can move into some other things. Um, and this is an a &R request. Um, uh, approval not required, and Carolyn, Mrs. is going to walk the planning board through that. Um, so let me put this on the, I'm going to share my screen and show you the plan. This is a two part. This is similar to the one that you all looked at. Um, do you see it on the screen, the plan? Uh, yep, or no? Yep. You do? Okay. So this is Winter Street. It, um, down here is Prospect and it it dead ends essentially at the bike path down near um, Stoddard and State Street. Uh, so there is um, a bit of, there's a segment, 2,400 square feet, this rectangle here at the, on the upper right of the screen. It has not been accepted as part of the Winter Street layout. Um, and it, but it's in, and it's improved with gravel here. There is a house at the end. BPW is about to embark on some work on Winter Street, and they need to fix this. This has just been the way it's been for, you know, 80 years or what have you. So I guess there are two parts to this. One is to sign off on this um, extension of the lot line. Essentially, that's it's a taking by the city for this segment of Winter Street, and the other is um, so that would be. Item one and item two would be a recommendation um, for the city to um, alter the, the, the right of way and accept the, this end of Winter Street. Um, so again, it's really just creating actually compliant more uh, compliance with this lot now at the very end that doesn't have, um, technically doesn't have frontage. Um, that's not the purpose of this, but that's the only thing it would do. It's still going to end at the end, and there's another um, parcel between the very end and the bike path, but it's not it's not creating frontage for that parcel. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Um, so. How come it's not creating frontage for that parcel? It sure looks like it is. Not at the butt end because we don't allow frontage at the very end of a street ever. Okay. So this piece that says Michael's house deed, that would not be frontage. Um, it's really just extending the frontage. This is where we count frontage along the side of the right of way. So this house is already in existence. Okay, and Carol, can we, um, Carolyn, can we roll these two things into one motion or should we move them separately? I think you should move them separately. All right, um, any questions from the board? I don't know if anyone was scribbling quickly to get that language down about the two motions. Um, oh, if you want, then first one is the normal one. That's just, uh, I mean, the one that you nor regularly review, um, which, is, which is an A and R. A motion to approve the A and R as presented. Right. Okay. Motion. I move to endorse the A and R as presented. Second. Thank, thank you, David. Thank you, Corinne. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, here in none because it's uh, a Hold Zoom. Hold on, I just have a correction here. Um, Corinne, as an associate member, can't vote on ARs. Oh, I should have said that. 
no, 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 it's not your fault. It's just, it gets confusing. So we need a, a different um, board member to second, second. that. Okay. Thank Thanks. you, Melissa. So Carolyn, and now, uh, so we just have four board members available to vote on the a &R. That's fine. That's enough. Okay. All right. So the motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. So uh, because it's a Zoom call, we have to go through kind of a voice vote. Um, so I'll call out names. All those in favor of the approval, favor of the motion. Let's start with Melissa. Yes. And Chris. Yes. And David. And George, chair. Yes. Okay. Motion's been made and approved unanimously. Sorry, Corinne, you'll get your chances later tonight. Bummer. Um, and the second motion is to approve a change of the, or, or taking by the, the city and the DPW. A recommendation that the city council accept this um, right of way um, extension. I would like to propose that recommendation to city council. Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, David. So the motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, we'll go to that voice vote again. Uh, Melissa? Yes. And Chris? Yes. And jo uh, David? Yes. Okay. And George also votes yes. So it's approved. You can walk over to the city council Zoom meeting. Right. <laughs> Okay. So we can do the other items later since we're past that public hearing time. Okay. All right. So at this point, we'll open up a uh, uh, public hearing scheduled for 705 to review a site plan application to add a second attached unit by Bridget Mulcairns of 26 Herald Street, Florence, map ID 12C-57. So does the applicant have a presentation for us? Hi, I'm, I'm Bridget and I'm happy to walk you through the, the plans. If you'd like, I can share my screen. That would be great. Sure. Just a minute here. Okay. So, I'm um, not sure what parts would be helpful to highlight, but here we are at 26 Herald Street. The current lot has a single car garage and a very small mudroom um, right where my cursor is. And we, our proposal is to build a 940 square foot dwelling uh, with an attached mudroom to the current single family home on the property. Um, the footprint would be um, slightly larger than the current garage, but also uh, pushed a little further in toward the back of the yard. Um, I don't know which, um, so this is, a, this is the current. So the existing garage is right here. That would be removed. This mudroom here would be removed. Um, and the new structure, um, let me scroll down, or maybe I'll, um, this is the current structure as is, the side view. Uh, and then down here would be um, the replacement uh, right here joined by mudroom. I'm not sure if there's this, if, I would love some guidance on what is most helpful for me to highlight or talk about. Um, I guess one thing I'll, I'll name up front is that the design um, is thoughtful in terms of privacy, knowing that it is close to the property line um, where there's a, a staircase and a, a bathroom with a high window specifically designed on the side that is that abuts the property line. Um, so it was thoughtful and careful so that the view from the interior is only sort of of the backyard and the trees um, and that there's no um, peering into um, adjacent properties. Great. Um, and you've had an opportunity to uh, talk to your neighbors about this, some of the abutters? Correct, yes. Good, thank you. Yep. Um, 
and our Carolyn notice mentioned that uh, it's in the water supply district, um, which is somewhat unique in the city and it limits the size of uh, um, dwellings that can be built there to single and two family homes. So um, that's another kind of limiting factor. And the other thing that is different from other projects we've seen lately is that we need to have 60% open space on lots like this, um, which this project still has, even though, because you're basically building on the same footprint and there's still a very large yard there. Um, other questions from the planning board members? All right. Um, often when we see applications like this, a big question from abutters or from people in the neighborhood is around increased traffic. But basically, you're not really bringing in any any new uh, cars or new people to the neighborhood. You're expanding your own house because you're a growing a growing family. Um, so it, within that, we're waving. I think there's. Um, a question for the planning board of whether or not to perhaps uh, waive the traffic mitigation fee that might come usually along with an application like this in this kind of residential neighborhood. Okay, well, we'll hold off then for a little bit and we'll open a public hearing to see if there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak, um, make any comment related to the application. Please raise your hand either by using the, the raise hand function at the bottom of your toolbar or just wave wildly. Hello, Patrick. Uh, good evening, members of the planning board. Uh, my name is Patrick Bowen. I live at Nine Herald Street in New Hampton. I'm speaking tonight in support of this application from Bridget uh, to add the second attached unit to her property. Um, as its background, um, as some of you may know, I was on the New Hampton Housing Partnership for several years and been involved in affordable housing and housing generally in the city. And overall, I'd say in addition to the specific reasons why I support this project, generally increasing housing across the city is a good goal that we should be working towards. On this particular one, you're also essentially just replacing a garage with a larger structure to allow two, two, um, two families to live there. Um, I, in this neighborhood is full of several non-conforming properties because it was built before modern zoning. Um, my house as well also is close to the edge of the zoning line and many others are within the area so it's not a significant difference in the layout of the neighborhood to ha have this property built this way um, and it'll be beneficial to the community overall to have this um, two family here and beneficial to this family as well and i hope that you support uh, approving their application thank you for your time thank you patrick good to see you back again thank you um, how about Adena Calden? Hi, my name is uh, Garrett Cahill, but I'm on my uh, spouse's account, Adina. Uh, I live at 21 Cloverdale Street in Florence, which is uh, on the corner of Cloverdale and Herald Street. And I just wanted to also speak out in favor of this uh, project um, and hope that you'll support it. Great. Would you mind giving us your name one more time? Yes, uh, For... Garrett Cahill. Garrett Cahill. Okay, thank you, Garrett. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Well, that's good. Okay. Planning board members, other points of discussion? Seems pretty straightforward. All right. Uh, Carolyn, maybe you mentioned that the uh, the board, the DPW had a weigh in on a couple of things that. Um, they noted that there just wasn't um, an indication of the water and sewer connections. I think they would typically in this kind of scenario, they wanna see the connections coming from the main house, but this is an issue that can be addressed during the building permit. So it's not a, is that a red flag by any means? Um, 
to um, for the board. Great, thank you. Did this go to Zoning Board of Appeals at all? Or yes, they just they had that earlier, and um, the Zoning Board granted the special permit to um, extend the nonconformity closer to the parcel line. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Well, I, I had an opportunity to go through the neighborhood and buy the site today, and it was great to see in the application and at the house that the, the applicants are uh, trying to avail themselves as, as much solar energy as they can, um, staying away from any gas appliances. The new house will be very much um, energy sufficient, and um, I think these the new developments like this are great for us as we move forward as a community. So. Thanks for writing that up in your application too. All right. Um, so no other comments, uh, suggestions. You know, I think during our motion, the only thing we would need to add is perhaps this waiver of the traffic mitigation fee because there really won't be any kind of increased traffic at all. I would support that. I, I, I also just want to uh, extend, honestly, my, I feel like, we screwed up big time on this uh, by right uh, legislation. If this like very straightforward project had to go to ZBA and to us, and I mean, we messed up the legislation big time if, if this tiny thing, I know there's little details why they had to, but it seems like this should not be uh, two hearings. I mean, this is insane. So, so much for by right anyway, but I would support uh, waiving traffic mitigation fee also. I, can I just speak to the double permits? This was, a, it's not a consistently required for every small unit like this. It just happens that they're building closer to the lot line because there's non, they're not meeting the setback. Oh, I know. I, I, I feel like here. Northampton's so full of non-conforming lots that we should have addressed like some degree of non-conformity or something or in the legislation. We can't fix it tonight. Anyway, I, I get it. There's a reason, but that's why we write legislation. But anyway. I'm, I, can we make a motion? Are we ready? Are we done? <laughs> Let's yeah. let these people go. <laughs> We're ready. I'd move that we close the public hearing. Second. Thank you. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to close the public hearing, which means we can't ask the applicant any questions or hear anything from the public. Any discussion? All right, then we'll go to a voice vote. Uh, Melissa. Yes. And Chris. Yes. And David. Yep. And Corinne, is Corinne eligible for this special permit? Yep. Yes. Okay. And George, so it's five unanimous. Okay. It's just so to close the public, the public hearing. Just to close the public hearing. So are there any other points of discussion or questions among the board for staff? All right, then we'll Gladly accept the motion for the project. I'll move that we uh, approve the site plan to add the second attached unit at 26 Herald Street, along with waiving the traffic mitigation fee. Second. Thank, Thank you. Okay, so Melissa moved and we'll give the second to Corinne this time. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Pretty straightforward then. We will go to a voice vote. We'll start with Melissa again. Yes. And Chris. Yes. David. Yes. And Corinne. Yes. And George votes yes also. So unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Such efficiency today. So now we'll move into our 715 public forum, um, which is gonna be led more or less by staff and our consultants. Um, and this is to review the Florence streetscape and issues, opportunities, improvements that have been um, discussed for some time now and laid out in street plans. And uh, I see there's a lot of folks here, which is great. And at this point, Carolyn, I don't know if you want to give us, is Carolyn still here? So, oh, Carolyn, I don't know if you want to give us any background or just turn it over to our, our reps from Dodson and Flinker. 
Um, yes. So just um, sort of quick, um, you know, background. So a couple things. Um, this, the Florence um, Streetscape Forum is, um, I, and this forum is about sort of this final streetscape design sort of manual that we can have um, ready. It's sort of a long-term style guide or, or vision for ways to address the public realm in um, Florence based on comments that um, we received. Um, but I want to talk about how that relates to sort of some of the existing work that's happening now. Sort of there was um, some money uh, that we were able to um, put together to um, take on some pretty simple, straightforward projects immediately based on um, concerns and issues that people raised. So um, this includes a new installation and updates to the bike racks, newspaper racks, wayfinding signs, um, which are in process. The design has been completed. We have the signs. It's a matter of just installing them now. So there was the big process for that, for wayfinding for um, Florence Center. Um, these also include tree pits, um, and um, accessible ramps, audio, uh, pedestrian signal. Um, and um, these, those, those, those improvements are actually imminent. We um, bid the contract to do that. So you're gonna start seeing people on the street um, making these improvements that we were able to obtain funding for. And so that's, the, that's sort of the, almost like the, kick off implementation of this plan. Um, and so that's that's how that piece that you're gonna start seeing immediately has been sort of rolling on in parallel as Dodson and Flinker has been helping with sort of the, putting together the bigger package and a longer term set of um, vision. So I'll just hand it over to um, Dylan and um, Nate from Dodson and Flinker. And then I'm just gonna, I think I need to have you um, co-hosts, both of you, so that you can screen share. So let me just do that. Um, Carolyn, yeah. if I might, quick question. There's another process going on or with the city council and the planning board about uh, approval of the form-based zoning, which yeah. somewhat impacts Florence Center does, but these are not related, though some of the concepts overlap. Right. So this, and I think Dodson Flinker will sort of talk about that intersection as well. But um, so the form-based code, you all had your public um, hearing on that a couple of weeks ago. That is um, in, is intertwined and related to the public realm, which is what the streetscape it focuses on. But the form-based code really gets deep into the details for what happens on the private side of that um, public um, street. Thank you. And that is going, that'll be at city council tonight, actually. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm Dylan Sussman from Dodson and Flinker. We are a landscape architecture and planning firm located in Florence, um, which is the subject of this project. Um, so thank you, planning board. Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you, members of the public for coming tonight. Um, as Carolyn mentioned, um, this is a, I think it's a project that in some ways grew out of the form-based code work, um, where we held some public forums about planning for Florence. And one of the, one of the topics that came up in those was um, that some of the public infrastructure in Florence could use some improvements. Um, and so there were there was a forum held where streetscape general opportunities for improving the streetscape were put forward. And as a result of that, the city moved forward with some is moving forward with some specific improvements. Um, but as part of that, also it seemed like it was a good idea to do a, a kind of long-term vision for Main Street and Florence um, so that public and private investment could be coordinated. So the form-based code work looks at the, the private realm or the, the, the private side um, and then has the potential for some public um, improvements as part of development projects. So one of the questions is what really is desired for those public improvements? 
Um, and then the other question is, what should the city be doing over time as funds become available to improve the streetscape in downtown Florence? So this project is, it's not a, it's not like a design plan where everything is really clearly defined and drawn out to inches. Um, it's a vision plan. Um, and I think the idea is that the, the planning board would adopt a vision plan. Um, Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I think the idea is that the planning board would adopt a vision and that vision would be implemented over time on a sort of ad hoc basis as opportunities arise. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and just, we're gonna walk you through, um, we're gonna walk you through it. Okay. Um, so our goals tonight are to just share the results of what we've done so far and to get your input about it. Um, the overall priorities for streetscape improvements in Florence and then specific design features. We've got some presentation, probably will take about 20 minutes. And then we're gonna ask for your, your questions and um, if we, we hope to limit those to just questions clarifying the information we've shared and then we have time for discussion and we have some questions for you to respond to. Okay, so here we are in Florence. I'm gonna talk about existing issues and opportunities and then um, my colleague Nate is gonna walk you through ideas for improvements. So this is a plan view image of Florence. Um, Main Street is running through the middle. Maple Street is running up and down. I don't see anything. Dylan, I don't think you're sharing yet. Whoa, <laughs> gosh. Zoom foul. We we all know Florence pretty well. We could probably visualize it. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> you missed some really, really exciting slides. Like okay. this one and this one and that one. And here we are. Okay. So um, now you see my screen. And I see you, which is lovely. Okay, so Main Street is running. Um, horizontally and Maple Street is running vertically. Um, so I'm gonna show you an image that's basically, it's a long strip of Florence, but we've broken it up into three sections. Um, if you look on the far right, you see what's called the match line. So look for that on the next image. Um, we basically you know, looked at the existing conditions in Florence and called out the things that are, that are issues and the things that are opportunities. Um, and this graphic also includes some of the work that's in the works that the city is, is actually building um, in the coming months. Um, so the green circles are trees, newer, new and replaced trees um, that are going to be put in. And then the yellow is, is structural soil for those trees that's going to be put in. Um, and then the sort of brown salmon, dark salmon, our sidewalk improvements that are underway. Um, so as you can see with these, with these tree improvements, one of the key issues in Florence is that uh, trees have been repeatedly planted and then died um, within a few years. Um, and I think the, the working assumption is that that is because they have inadequate soil. Um, so as, the, as part of the improvements that are underway, there's gonna be structural soil put in um, to expand the opportunity for root growth um, for those trees. So starting at the corner of Maple and Meadow Street and Main Street, um, one issue is that the sidewalk for the sidewalk on the corner there in front of Birds is actually um, not in the public right of way, it's on private property. Um, moving across the street, there's an opportunity to put in a new tree um, next to the parking lot that goes into the back of 100 Main Street. It looks like there's enough room there for a new tree. Um, going to the post office block. Um, post office block there has sort of limited seating in it. It has, um, and, you know, post office boxes and a, and a small tree. So it's, it's one of the key opportunities to improve the streets gave in Florence where you've got a nice wide sidewalk, um, some active storefronts, the diner, the post office, and so on. Um, so this is an opportunity to make improvements there, um, depending on what people want. Um, moving down the street to 100 Main Street, 
there is a sort of concrete area. You can see the planter in it right now that um, doesn't really have much use. That's an opportunity for things like benches or bike racks or other amenities. Um, so there's space there for that. As well, on the other side of the driveway, there's a, a fairly large um, green space that is, has adequate space for a tree. Um, street lighting in Florence is, um, is minimal. Um, it's provided by cobra head fixtures that are intended to light the street. Um, but, and you know, throw some light onto the sidewalk, but they weren't actually designed to light the sidewalk. So there isn't pedestrian scale lighting in Florence. The lighting that's there is a combination of the street lighting and then light that comes out, spills out from storefronts when they're lit at night. Um, the street lights are on the south side of the street. Um, so the Florence Diner side of the street, there are no street lights on the other side of the street. Um, and that's created some dark pockets, particularly at the area in front of Valley Medical Group, um, when, which doesn't have a lot of storefront windows, right? So there isn't a lot of light being thrown out by that use. Um, and it's, it's pretty dark at night. So street lighting is an issue. Um, and then moving on down the street, the um, crosswalk at Kai's Street uh, could be narrowed with um, curb bump outs to shorten the crossing and improve visibility for pedestrians. Moving on down the street, so here's the match line from the last image, last image, current image, right? So we just moved past Kai Street. Um, and we're now talking about the area in front of the Florence Bank drive through um, and Fink in Paris. So after the city completed a survey, it turns out that this, there's a pretty good portion of uh, sort of lawn and planted area in front of the Florence Bank drive through and Fink in Paris that's actually within the public right of way. So if there's interest in, in a parklet, which means a very small park, um, in Florence, this is a key opportunity for that um, because there is extra space within the right of way. Um, on the south side of the streets, um, basically from Valley Medical Group all the way down to um, 40 Main, there's pretty limited um, sidewalk. It's basically a, a five foot sidewalk. Um, and often there's a curb right on the property side of that sidewalk. Um, and when driveways are crossing the sidewalk, there's significant cross slope. So it's, it's barely, you know, barely adequate. Um, and there is an extra space within the right of way to expand the, the, um, the sidewalks there. So that's one of the ideas with the form based code is if these properties are redeveloped over time to try and improve that condition so there's more space for walking so that two people could walk comfortably side by side down these sidewalks um, and address the cross slopes on the driveway. What else do we have here? Um, one other thing to, a couple other things to mention, uh, the, the curb, new curb, relatively new curb bouts in front of Cumberland Farms um, have, sometimes poor visibility when there's a car parked immediately in front of the, the crosswalk on the um, sort of, what is that, eastbound side of, of Main Street. Um, and then on Wilder, the in intersection of Wilder's Place and um, Main Street, right in front of Cooper Co Cooper's Corners parking lot, um, there's a portion of the sidewalk here that's quite narrow uh, where there's a, a fence and then a utility pole squeezing the sidewalk. Um, and there's also an opportunity for a new tree on the corner of um, Wilder Place and Main Street where you can see this parking, these parking spaces are actually within the city right of way. Moving down the street again. Okay. Um, on the corner of Chestnut Street and Main Street, there's an area with a very narrow, uh, very narrow area between the stoplight and the box for it. It's about 31 inches. It's not ADA accessible. It's in front of the Sitco Florence Towing. Um, and then moving down to um, South Main Street and Trinity Park, 
Um, there's a very wide turning radius coming out of that, so cars can fly around that corner. Um, and this is being addressed with uh, current improvements. And then at the other end of Trinity Park, um, there's a steep existing sidewalk with a dead end um, and no connection to the neighborhood. So those are the issues and the opportunities. I mean, basically, the, the key ones there are that the sidewalks on the north side in the sort of Florence Bank friendlies area are, are minimally, they're narrow, very narrow. Night lighting is fairly poor. There's a lack of um, consistent street furniture and, um, and then there's some specific sort of ADA accessibility issues, as well as a lack of trees, which is being addressed and can be addressed more over time, and um, a general lack of bike racks. Okay, so now Nate's going to tell you about the opportunities. Yeah, so based on those um, issues or, or problems, we've come up with um, some ideas for how they might be addressed, um, both specifically, but also how those specific things we could do could add up over time to something that might be um, a center that was more cohesive and lively and enjoyable for everyone. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you go to the next slide, um, should be a familiar view at this point in this, the same plan. Um, this is showing uh, those improvements that are currently underway along with some additional places where we think um, things could happen that would be beneficial um, to help knit together the streetscape. So this, that includes some places where some new street trees could go within the public right of way, places where tr additional trees could be replaced, um, as well as some opportunities on private property where there also are locations for trees um, that could help add to the, the canopy of the street. Um, and then addressing those issues of lighting, places for pedestrian scale lighting, um, planters, uh, benches, and trash and recycling furnishings. So next slide. So at Miss Florence Diner, um, looking west, this is the a, sort of a vision perspective of what um, we think that this area could look like with some incremental improvements in the areas of street trees, furnishings, et cetera. So um, some of the key sort of transformational um, items would be the establishment potentially on the north side of more of a furnishing and tree belt um, along the, the curb line. Um, so the process has already begun um, with some, some new trees, um, but more trees and um, perhaps even more importantly, along with those trees, um, continuing to take opportunities to add structural soil so that the trees that are planted will thrive. Um, and within the drip line of trees, potentially adding pervious pavement or pervious tree surrounds to help um, get water to the roots of, of the trees um, and also to help establish um, the area of furnishings and trees as sort of a distinct zone that would be separate from a travel area for pedestrians to walk. Um, and then that north side is wide enough, the right of way is wide enough to be able to accommodate um, more of a typical streetscape like this. Um, in addition to that, the tree piece of it, um, there's the element you can see in the foreground of this image, um, a pedestrian scale light. So one that's 12 to 14 feet tall, um, which we think would be a really good addition um, in between the cobra headlights. So not, not taking the cobra headlights away, but supplementing the cobra headlight to help even out the lighting along the sidewalk. And in particular, um, some of the places where there are dark spots or at driveways where um, the sort of cobra lighting does a good job of lighting the street, but it may still either actually be unsafe or you might have a perception that it's unsafe crossing the driveway. Um, that pedestrian, those pedestrian lights would also be an opportunity 
along with the poles for the Cobra headlights for um, signage, for village kind of branding signage and event signage um, that you can see. And um, which, you know, would again, help to provide identity to um, the Florence Center for folks that are visiting um, and also let people know that it's a, a great place to be and that there's things going on. Um, in addition to uh, that, some street furnishings that are cohesive. So there are already benches and um, you know, trash and recycling receptacles and things like that um, within the center, of course, but um, they kind of have a pretty different set of um, forms and colors and tend to look kind of jumbled um, together. And so there's an opportunity there to, um, through investment over time, to build a set of benches um, bike racks, planters, um, and other furnishings that are more cohesive in terms of the form and color, um, and also more, in some cases, maybe more durable, um, so that they really uh, last. Um, <clears throat> and then, in addition to that piece within the public right of way, uh, opportunities to work with private um, landowners, businesses to also put in bike racks and benches and things like that that coordinate with that overall um, vision for street furniture. And then similar to those furnishings, um, there are, as you know, some surfaces around concrete walls, uh, railings and things like that that um, are kind of plain or incongruous with some of the uh, facades adjacent to them. And we think that would be a great spot for some simple things like murals or, or art that could help um, add some, you know, lively uh, splashes of color through the um, through the center. And so there's some opportunities there to work with uh, folks that own the buildings to really bring the area to life. Um, next slide. Uh, other way, I think. There we go. Same thing at night. Um, you know, the again, those the the lighting. Um, in addition to being pedestrian scale in terms of height, um, we would imagine these lights to be dark sky compliant fixtures um, that would have uh, appropriate cutoff and um, color temperature to try to make the space um, of the center uh, enjoyable to walk through in, at night. Next, uh, one before this. The this is um, the same view, um, but another opportunity that either in this location or other places on Main Street would be um, within that same sort of furnishing and tree belt. That width is is great enough that you could potentially put in um, some wheelchair accessible parking. Uh, that's parallel parking, so within the public right away. And this is an example of what what that might look like. So you have enough space for um, a, a curb cut that could allow for use of a of a parallel wheelchair accessible space um, that could supplement the spaces that are within the private lots in the center. And you can also see in that image a little different fixture um, that is still a pendant style light, which as the, you know, you could either evoke some of the lights that have been tr traditionally on the mixed use buildings and mill buildings in the center, um, or you could take the same approach and, and maybe take something that's a little bit more contemporary or uh, distinct um, in the area to, as another opportunity for the center. Next, that's just another view of that um, area. So moving further east into the area um, in front of Florence Bank, again, some opportunities for street trees and furnishings. And then as Peter mentioned, or as uh, Dylan, sorry, <laughs> mentioned, um, there's an opportunity within the wider right of way, um, in particular at Florence Bank for a parklet. So we thought we'd show some options for what that might look like. Um, and this isn't to say that this is the only location for a parklet or that this would be um, implemented right away or anything, but would be using it as an exploration for the kinds of things that, um, you know, you all might want to see in the center in Parklet. So um, 
within that space that's available in the right of way, you could do something like this, which would combine um, pre-manufactured benches that are um, for seating features that are sculptural and unique, and but at the same time have the advantage of being um, a furnishing. In this case, it's from Landscape Forms, so it's a product you could purchase. Um, it doesn't have to be custom created for the site. Um, and that could be combined with lighting um, and a wider paved area, pollinator friendly plantings um, to supplement all the planting that's already there as part of the bank property um, and provide a, a space to that would encourage people to stop and talk and, and um, enjoy having dinner or, or a, a snack um, in the center and might also include something like a piece of public art that builds off of the history of the center. So in this case, showing um, a riff on the Corticelli Silk Buildings sign in New York City um, that has been the, I think the source for several public art installations in the area, um, but something like that could really start to, or a sequence of art um, pieces uh, could, you know, help people understand the how Florence Center is distinct from other parts of um, the area and draw attention to the history here. Uh, interactive features like maybe a bike that folks could stop and, and pedal and maybe it would make the lights turn on and off. Um, and again, uh, pedestrian scale lighting for that space. Next. This is how that those features would fit within the right of way. and what it would look like at night. And so in this case, a little bit more compact parklet would allow for things like infill development. If the property behind that parklet, um, if there was a desire to have that uh, redeveloped for a new mixed use building or shop, um, you could have uh, sort of synergy between the parklet and the new business, which would provide um, within the public realm a place to draw folks to help, you know, people establish businesses within a mixed use building. Next. Um, another take on what you could fit in the same space would be um, a, a larger parklet that maybe since we have a lot of universities in the area, partnering with one of the programs at UMass or at Smith that have folks that are into art or landscape and might be interested in developing in partnership with um, the community, some kind of custom furnishing that would be cool and groovy and um, win them a award somewhere, but also would provide space for folks to sit and eat, um, to relax with a friend, to park a bike, and again, native plantings that would support pollinators and um, add biodiversity to the center and also um, really establish a center of activity within the, the center here in the district. So next slide. What that would look like, um, a little larger footprint within the right of way. And again at night, and I think that the the lighting piece here um, across all of these, the idea is pedestrian scale lights that help to even out the lighting, um, and particularly on the sidewalk side um, of the street, and then combining that with opportunities for creative lighting in parklets that would help draw folks and make it an enjoyable place to stay at night. And just like this could be sort of a catalyst or have some relationship to infill development, some of these features would also and could be designed so as to be the first step towards a larger park. So in this case, this could be the sort of a, a initial phase of um, work either uh, in partnership with, with a private 
uh, landowner or you know the, the, the city could purchase property um, to create more of a park or an, a larger park over time or to um, as a way to, to you know expand planting with working with building and owners and business owners. So. Next. And then sort of a third vision for what you could fit in that space in the right of way. Um, in this case, where the first two were a little more contemporary, um, this one is sort of a, uh, responding to the materials and, and forms of the adjacent buildings and something that would be um, a little bit more uh, traditional in terms of the materials and relationships within it. But again, providing seating, in this case, maybe a shelter uh, that would be helpful for folks waiting for a bus in the area, plantings and opportunities for seating and um, particularly sitting at a table um, enjoying food and what that would look like in the right of way. And at night. So then continuing on down, um, you know, the, again, there's some opportunities um, in the area between Chestnut Street and the park for um, where there are existing crosswalks. I think that there is some advantage potentially to adding additional bump outs or otherwise narrowing the street um, to facilitate easier crossing um, in a few strategic locations or and or locations for um, buyer retention features to help a little bit with stormwater um, in, in, and being friendly to the watershed um, and opportunities for some new crosswalks, particularly at the park where there is kind of a dead end that is a steep, steep sidewalk that ends at the street. And then you're left ask, wondering where you're supposed to go. Um, and there's also opportunity at that location in the park, we, we think for um, as a larger larger project to regrade the sidewalk there so that it is wheelchair accessible and potentially do that work also um, kind of create even more of a gateway to the center. And that might be a good location for additional plantings, um, you know, improvements to the, the landscaping that's already there and, and signage to coordinate with some of the other signage that's going on in the center. Um, and as Dylan mentioned earlier, the, the turn from Main Street to South Main Street is already being addressed in terms of uh, making that corner less wide to help encourage people to treat it more as a, a turn and not an off, off ramp for Main Street. Um, but there's some opportunity there beyond the current work to add fire retention, um, treat stormwater, and potentially also narrow the crossing distance at that location. So within those kind of larger opportunities, there are some choices. And um, one of the key choices is uh, with site furnishings, you know, what type of site furnishing would you all like to see? And some, some things that we think would fit um, or could be good opportunities would be, um, here's three that we think would be a nice fit. So A, something that's these benches and, and rectangular planters and um, that are a little more contemporary. Nice thing about a rectangular planter is it fits into nice, into lots of different configurations and can fit into some of the odd corners and tight spaces around the center. Um, but even if it were a mix of, of different colors, having at least some uniformity in terms of what, what color the, ben the benches and furnishings are would help to provide some cohesiveness within the center. Having it out of metal, powder coated metals good for the longevity of the furnishings. Um, and instead of separate trash and um, recycling, there is potential for combined trash and recycling if that were desirable um, is sort of option A. Option B is a little bit more traditional bench, again, out of metal, it's durable um, and 
coordinating trash and recycling receptacles and planters um, that all would be within a similar form as well, similar um, look to them. And each of these examples are types that are found across multiple manufacturers. So there's um, kind of standard bench types that you can get uh, pick your manufacturer that works well with the, the community. Um, and also, since they tend to be standardized, there's opportunity also within the furnishings to have options in terms of backed benches, backless benches, different types of armrests. And so these are all, all it's great to have a family of, of benches like this that you could then use to customize and make sure that you're using making the most of opportunities available. That's B. And then see the existing benches in the center are the, these uh, Victor Stanley benches that are um, have Trex boards, which are have more longevity um, than some types of wood, but uh, are gonna be less durable than the, the metal powder coated benches in the long run. Um, but you have some in the center already. So there are opportunities there keeping the same bench that you've already added um, to to complement those benches with um, matching trash and recycling receptacles and planters, either in form or color or both to add some cohesiveness there, um, you know, working with what you have. So those are kind of three possibilities for site furnishings as we see it. And similarly with the lighting and all those renderings, um, I was showing pendant lights, um, again, sort of evoking the light on a lot of the mixed, mixed use buildings and uh, mill buildings in the center. And those could be more neo-traditional or more contemporary. In both cases, there are, and we would encourage um, and would use dark sky compliant lights that have cut off, full cut off and um, color temperatures so as to not add light pollution um, beyond the immediate need of evening out light at the sidewalk. Um, but there are other options. There's kind of the village style neo-traditional lamp post that you can see in, in the middle that um, is, you see lots of places around um, and also can be dark sky compliant and meet those other criteria, um, but would be, a, would be an opportunity. Um, and then the, the more contemporary kind of disc type light I believe these are in Pulaski Park most recently, this kind of style. Um, but those lights also, like these other lights, do come in um, dark sky compliant products. So that's a, an even more contemporary um, version. I personally like the, the pendant light. So I put them in the renderings. I think it would be a nice fit and distinct from some of the other um, lighting in Northampton. Um, but wanted to give you a range of, of, of options. And all of these, if done together, would help, we think would help even out the light, provide a, a more um, comfortable walking experience for pedestrians and help to unify the center while also making a, a sense of identity more apparent for the center um, within the public realm. So those are the images we had prepared. And then Dylan, if I could pick back up. Sure. So yes. So now it's your turn. Um, first, we're we're looking for if anybody has any questions about what was presented. Any clarifying questions? Um, uh, George, are you okay with me just calling on people, or do you want to moderate? Sorry, I, you were muted, George. No, you go right ahead, Dylan. Call okay. Up, folks, so. Um, so I saw uh, Elena. Yeah, my name's Elena. Um, I'm a resident in Florence. Um, thanks so much for your presentation this evening. Um, I'll start off with uh, one basic question, which is uh, I'm curious what the time horizon is for this visioning project. I know you had said that this is more a cohesive vision, but do you see this 10, 15, 20 years? Um, what does that timeline look like? Yes, 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, long term. I think the idea is to, to, to again, to guide things as opportunities arise. Um, mm -hmm. So 
without a dedicated source of funding for these improvements, it would take time to implement them. Yeah, okay. specifically, they will use the money in design. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I appreciate that. Um, one thing I noticed um, throughout the entire presentation is that there's a lot of bike parking, which I really appreciate. I'm an avid cyclist. I um, typically bike um, to get around town. Um, I live in a car light household, so my husband and I have one car. Um, so we utilize our bikes quite often to go shopping, um, to run errands, um, things of that nature. And um, I noticed that there are no bike lanes on Main Street. Um, and this is a particular Really a pain point for me in particular because I do a, quite a bit of shopping on Main Street. I go to the hardware store, I frequent the post office, um, I go to the diner pretty often on the weekends um, in Cooper's Corner as well. And while I recognize there's not a lot of um, bike parking on Main Street right now, um, I'm a little disappointed that this vision being 10, 15, 20 years down the line doesn't include any sort of bicycle infrastructure on street um, that, you know, I think one side of the coin is that we're adopting and changing um, to more people who are seeing cycling as a viable mode of transportation, not just for recreation. Um, but then on the other side of the coin, we also are in a climate crisis and we are moving away from um, using cars as our dependent source of transportation. And so it just would love to see um, further um, bike infrastructure on street. I also recognize that we have the, the bike trail just a couple blocks away, but again, that doesn't get me safely to these destinations where I'm doing a lot of my shopping. Yeah, here you go. Can I answer a couple, I thought it might be helpful for to respond to the timeline question. Um, it's. It, Yes, you know, this is really just sort of um, outlet, as um, Dylan and Nate suggested, a vision for some of the elements that could be brought to bear within the um, downtown, within um, Florence Center. But as, um, as funding becomes available, we might be able to take pieces of this and implement them. Um, we also have many bike racks now that can be put on the street that and they're easily we can purchase those kinds of things it's a matter of finding the space so this kind of this this plan also um identifies places where there might be room now so that we could go ahead and start putting those um fixtures in place um so it's not necessarily that we have to wait for years and years to put new bike racks in places um in terms of the street and um infrastructure within the, the travel way, that is um, a bigger design issue that is not meant to be addressed by this streetscape um, improvement plan. Sure, that makes sense, I appreciate that. And then I had one last comment and it's a small detail, um, but outside Florence Dental, um, there's no curb stoppages for the parked cars in their parking lot. And oftentimes those um, cars bumpers are in the sidewalk just because they pulled a feet or you know a foot or two into you know too far into their parking spot which happens you know to anyone and i'm just wondering if that could be a short term fix um, because you know it does narrow the, the sidewalk there is pretty narrow anyways and then it really narrows it when those cars are parked over the line i'll say so well, um, that's a lot of issues and opportunities graphic yeah, and just so, just I wanted to respond to that as well because we actually have own right of way into that, like beyond the sidewalk. So that's definitely something that we can address in the near term. Um, in fact, we're, we're planting, uh, planning on pl um, putting tree pits in that vicinity for that very purpose to say, okay, we need more comfortable space in this location. So um, that is something that we're looking at. Yeah, um, for the short term or in the short term. Great, thank you. Michael Miller. Hello, thank you for the presentation and um, an even even handed uh, description of, of, of your vision and, and how you would see things moving forward. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Um, um, I'm not gonna repeat what Elena said. I firmly um, 
endorse her comments and her her thoughts on the uh, on the bike um, infrastructure. Um, I, I would go a little bit farther and say that um, bike racks are great but something that would be a protected bike rack so that if it's raining a little bit, that your, your bike can be a little bit protected while you're going and doing your errands and doing things in town would, would, would be a, a step forward as well. But I wanna make a, a, a more general comment that there's been a large amount of planning and moving forward on redesigning downtown uh, the main street in Northampton. And I wonder um, whether there's been any communication with Tool to try and make things as seamless as possible so that the sense of coordination between the two um, areas can, can appear similar or, or not, if that's an active decision. And that decisions having to do with things such as the structural soil and adding trees, but also redesigning um, sidewalks so that they would be porous, so that the um, the tree root system would be better fed and would have a longer life and wouldn't have to be replacing trees um, more frequently. So there are a number of things that could be learned from what has already been done for the um, Picture Main Street project that could be incorporated into Florence in the infrastructure that I think would, would make things considerably better, ultimately having protected bike lanes. I mean, there are a number of things that could really be uh, major steps forward in making Florence more attractive, more useful and safer. And just wonder wh where you are in, in that regard. Thanks for those comments, Michael. Um, in terms of the coordination with Picture Main Street, it's a great idea. Um, we have not been working with them. So um, I think that they're both projects that the planning department is involved in. Um, so I assume that they're doing that coordination. Um, but we can we can look at what they're doing and learn from what they're doing. So thanks for the comment. Um, Robert, you're muted, Robert. You're still muted, but I you know I went through three slides of a presentation without screen sharing, so I understand. I found out today if you hit the alt button, it hides and brings the controls back on your screen. Spacebar sometimes works to unmute yourself as well. I think you're good to go, Robert. Oh, oh, there you go. You're unmuted, Robert Ross. Okay, um, does anybody else have a comment or a question? All right, um, I'm gonna move on to our questions for you all. Um, I had one more, I don't, sure. I don't know. I wanna make sure that others have an opportunity to chime in, um, but I wanted to maybe just raise a concern I have about the city's approach to doing more of a streetscape planning vision versus a kind of comprehensive planning vision for downtown Florence. And I, I draw on the example mm -hmm. of the curb bump outs in front of um, Cumberland Farms as, as one in that we're investing in this infrastructure um, long term and when it, we do have the funds or when a complete redesign or a complete comprehensive plan comes you know 
comes around, um, we're gonna all say and raise our hands, well, we put all this money into this existing infrastructure, like we can't put in a bike lane or we can't change the curb cuts now. Mm, um, so I, I just wanna, I guess, raise that concern I have because I'm looking at that curb bump out in front of Cumberland Farms as when we do put a bike lane in on Main Street, that's gonna um, be a, a challenge for us to implement that bike lane and build that out because we've already built that infrastructure for pedestrians, which I welcome you know, for today, but I think this piecemeal approach to planning and um, you know, investments in portions of our downtown without, not, without having a greater vision for our downtown is um, a lost opportunity for the future. Um, being a homeowner here in Florence, being a millennial here in Florence, I'm really looking to, you know, where this can be and how we can transform downtown Florence for not just, you know, where we are today, but where we are going to be in 20, 30 years. And I, I feel like it's, uh, you know, almost a waste of our tax dollars to be implementing you know, new lighting structures when one day we're going to be one day soon, hopefully we're going to be redoing, you know, the curbs and, and implementing bike lanes and ex, you know, completely changing the streetscape. And so um, just just to say to the city that I feel like um, doing this approach to the planning is um, maybe not the best use of our resources. And hopefully we can start integrating more um, holistic planning approaches and into our visioning processes. Um, Robert, you have your hand up. Do you want to try again? Yeah, I figured it out. Excellent. I lost my toolbar. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. So this plan isn't too far off from things that we've been pitching from the Civic Association for years now. Um, I'd love to see those uh, Cobra lights disappear completely. Um, they're ugly and they don't match the streetscape at all, especially if we change to some other pedestrian lighting. Um, we have been, we've, the association pushed for a long time to have some sort of antique lighting or and not, not carriage lamps, not the antique antique, but something turn of the century style. Um, I think, you know, that the plan is great. Unfortunately, it, it addressed some fixes that aren't that broken. Um, the area in front of the bank is already park-like. It is grass and plantings. There are other areas that are much more blatant, um, like in front of the dental office, uh, Florence Dental, across the street at Florence, right where your building is, that parking lot is a big expanse that's pretty ugly that could invite, would be a great place for a park lot actually, that would be a big uh, improvement. Um, we didn't really touch on what's happening on Trinity Row Park. Florence. I think that's getting to be more of a T actually, isn't it? As, as much as in closing. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I think that we miss the boat, but maybe it has to do with traffic patterns more than train, changing the structures. Uh, one way system might work around the park actually more properly for reducing traffic problems because that ends up being a cut through and it's too convenient to cut through the way that it works. If it was one way going in and one way going out at Berkshire Terrace, which is a square T, which would be easier for coming, for coming out. And it would actually, Berkshire Terrace is actually a very narrow street and it would serve better as a one-way street than as a two-way street. Um, we did pick those benches a while ago thinking that was our plan forward, the ones in front of uh, the post office and bird store. Um, they are fairly durable. In you know, hindsight, I think I would prefer a backless bench um, because you could park it in a way that it could be seated on either way, which actually comes to be a problem sometimes, where you you don't want to look at the street, or you don't want the, or you don't want the people, street gawkers looking towards your storefront. Um, we see this happening downtown quite frequently, um, and I don't think street furniture needs to necessarily be permanent either. Uh, benches can be more uh, transportable, and um, you could find that you find the traffic patterns change and seatings changes that it's almost more useful to be able to move it around. And I've, I've learned these things from um, 
Florence Night Out where we actually put temporary seating in different locations, but which works out quite well. Um, and to the bike lane, we're way off from having a bike lane in downtown Florence. We have Sharrows now because there we don't have the width for bike lanes on our main street. And the bike path is only a block away from downtown and it is a great route for travel if you if you get accustomed to using the bike path and dipping into town. There are many roads and avenues that come from the bike lane to downtown. Um, many shops do have uh, bike racks. Last count, there were 11 commercial bike racks in downtown Florence. Two at Miss Florence Diner, there's one at 40 Main Street, there's one at Cooper's. Um, there was supposed to be one at Birds, uh, not Birds, but the new Mobile Plaza, um, 100 Main Street. That or the trees never, or benches never materialized in that project. Um, this, this is part of, we have these public private co cooperations, but there's never any follow through on making this stuff happen. So uh, hopefully we could have better communication in the future and get more public private um, cooperation. Um, and back to the Florence Savings Bank location where a parklet vision is seen. That was supposed to be a bus stop to mirror the bus stop across the street, which never materialized, which would be great to have. Um, and I don't see any uh, water fountains in the vision plan, which is uh, filling stations. Um, that's something we've talked about at Florence Night Out to do to build a parklet or be part of, uh, to give a per per perpetual gift to downtown Florence as part of our organization when we do Florence Night Out, do something lasting like the crosswalk that we did in front of Cumberland Farms, which unfortunately the paint didn't last very well, but we plan on repainting that this season. And we would like to do other crosswalks as well, but so far we haven't gained permission to do so. Um, Thanks Robert. I think that pretty much rounds up what my uh, my thoughts. Okay, um, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, I was sorry. I didn't know what I was pressing there. Raise hand and something else. I don't know what the other one was. Um, yeah, I just thought, you know, with the points about the bike lanes being brought up, I wonder if this plan should should think about the connection from the bike lane, which runs parallel to Main Street, and uh, like Robert was saying, there are. A, a few different connection points to Main Street from the bike lane and if we should be thinking about integrating that a little bit more with this plan um, because I feel like some of those connections are a little informal right now. But I you know I know with my family I would rather I would rather take them on the bike path and then pop out to Florence Center than you know drive along Main Street even if there was a protected bike lane. But right. that's just me. Yeah, by informal, you mean like the connection to a wilder place where it's eroding? Right. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and maybe that could be a, you know, a point with a filling station with the bike tools, with the bike rack, park your bike here and then walk to, to Main Street kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's in your, in your purview of this vision or if you're just stuck to the right of way of Main Street though. Yeah, I mean, this was a pretty a very small scope project, and the intent was to stay within to to stay out of the road bed, so from the curbs to the private property line. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was um, because moving those curbs is a very very expensive undertaking, um, and so that's a it's a different scale. It's an order, many orders of magnitude larger than this project um, in terms of Im implementation. Um, I also think that um, there has probably been some looking at what kind of bike infrastructure is appropriate on Main, on Main Street in Florence as part of the PED bike plan that was done oh, five years ago, seven years ago. Um, so I, I think that's probably been looked at in the past. But uh, I think the point of uh, filling stations and covered bike parking are both very much in yeah. line with this project, though. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and um, yep, 
I guess as a as a citizen, so so my citizen opinion, looking at those connections to the bike path, yeah, that's that's really important. Um, and it is something we did as part of our our sort of vision planning for the form based code was looking at how to improve those connections. And I think it's also an important part of the wayfinding project um, to make the connections between the, the bike path and downtown so people know that they're actually passing through downtown Florence when they're there, because it can be hard to tell when you're passing through the parking lots behind Florence Saving Bank and so on. Yeah, it's such a such a great resource to have so close to downtown that you know, I'm sure a lot of downtowns would love to have that. So Florence is lucky that it's available. Um, Carolyn, did, was, did you want to say something? I was just going to follow up on that. I mean, you mentioned that your charge was from the back of the curb because we're not looking in the traveled way again. There's also a much longer conversation, and Robert um, raised that in his comments as well. Is you know there are trade-offs. If you're doing bike lanes, then that means we're getting rid of on-street parking to accommodate that. So that that the scope of this project was not about that longer-term um, project. We've also made we know that these things take a really long time, and it and um, so if we were to embark on a um, design of within the traveled way, um, even, um, you know, implementing some pieces of this would last five, 10, maybe longer years, you know, if it's done now, and that will have, you know, um, positive benefits until such time as we might um, have a redesign for um, this section of Main Street. Um, in Florence. Um, and then just one other note on the, I mean, if there is interest in, you know, taking back some of their sort of looking at places that um, aren't currently in the, on their way to being parklets, like in front of the dental practice where we know we have right of way, you know, we can address that, as I said earlier, um, it would mean that their parking would be adjusted because right now it's in the right of way and it would, and it would disappear or at least be um, pushed back. Um, but that's certainly something that um, we have the ability to do since it is public right away. Yeah. On the other on the other side of the street, I don't believe that the parking for Brick Mill Square Square or 40 Main Street is within the public right of way. Um, okay, Mary Jo Stanley. Hi. Um... One of my concerns in downtown Florence um, is that unfortunately it's set up in such a way that there's a lot of travel of cars back and forth across the sidewalks. And I've noticed in some, some of those areas, cars whip in um, <laughs> the parking lot or whip out crossing the sidewalk without very much attention paid to the pedestrians that are already on the sidewalk. Um, and I'm an adult and I worry about it. And I really worry about the kids that are out there that they're not paying attention, um, they're having fun. So I don't know if there's a way to somehow delineate <laughs> the sidewalk just to, to uh, or teach people to be more conscious of people on sidewalks. Uh, I've, I have spoken to some drivers um, and it was like, a, there was a revelation. They didn't realize, wow, when I'm waiting to pull out, I shouldn't be parked in the middle of the, the sidewalk to check the traffic. Um, so I don't know, it's just one of those things that I've been worried about. Yeah, that's a, it's an important issue. And um, I, I, have to admit, I've been one of those drivers who pulls out across <laughs> the sidewalk because otherwise I can't see around the car that's parked in front of um, 40 Main Street. Um, so yes, and it's another another thing to address. That's also something that the proposed zoning, you know, encourages closing curb cuts. Um, so I like the idea of delineating the sidewalks in some way, in some greater way, um, and. And part of that 
you know, is the idea of not having the, the driveway start at the back of the sidewalk where it's sloping down, but making sure that it's continuous across the sidewalk and then slopes from, from the curb in basically. Okay, so we have some more questions for you guys. Um, and I'm gonna share my screen. So share screen and I'll do it right this time. Okay, so the question is, what should the streetscape in Florence look like and feel like in the future? Um, and so Nate showed a couple different options and we're just curious what you guys think about these. Obviously, there's only a handful of participants tonight and you're probably not a representative sample of Florence, but still curious what people think is, is most appropriate for Florence and, and most importantly, why, um, right? Because since this isn't like a scientific poll, the, the why portion is most important um, because that gets to a sense of what's important to people in Florence. So in terms of parklets, I heard that um, some people think that this may not be the best location for a parklet, but just looking at the kind of style and the elements of parklets, um, which of these options do you feel like is most important, uh, most uh, appropriate for Florence and why? So uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and, and chime in. I'd be happy to speak. Great. I think I think C is probably more traditional and would match the key features that people like about Florence, which is the building that you're in, the Parsons block, the Goodwin block, which is the post office box block. The Parsons block is the is the birds block. It serves a dual purpose as actually being a, a bus stop, which is great. Um, and it feels like it's less expansive of concrete where the other two designs seem to actually put more con as as well while making a park it actually puts more hard surface in the in the street area thank you anybody else i got kind of excited when i first saw the c because i thought oh they have solar panels but then i realized the tracing in the wrong direction uh, just throwing out, wow, the possibility of having solar uh, right in downtown Florence. All right. Any other thoughts on these? A, B, C, Cassandra? Um, yeah, I like options A and B a lot because they introduce some curved lines to an otherwise very square and sort of rectangular, um, you know, design aesthetic. I also like the opportunity of having you know a mural or evolving you know revolving public art or something you know as articulated in option a because i think there's an there's an opportunity to keep that space fresh rather than something that's permanently installed but to have um you know changing artwork or installation or sculpture there so that you know as residents and visitors are returning to the space there's something new to discover over time I would echo Cassandra's comments in the design aspects of option A and B in terms of adding that curvature to the, the streetscape. I would also echo um, Robert's comments in that I appreciate the shade structure. Um, so if we could like blend those two, that would be some, you know, a perfect marrying of the two. Do the elements that are shown here basically, if you if you were to have a small public space in Florence, do the elements shown here match what you think would be useful? So seating, more trees, some um, additional plants. Um, I heard shade structure, um, something artistic or sculptural, um, some sort of funky lighting. Yeah, I things. love that. The other thing. Um... You know, I, I have seen the, the solar signage that also has um, as part of it a charging station. So I think that that might actually be a useful public option. Um, you know, it, it seems that we're, you know, tethered to our phones for the foreseeable future. So <laughs> um, having that, you know, whether the, the you know, if the shade structure the has solar panels that create a, a charging station, maybe engage in some lighting, whether that's 
you know, streetscape lighting or lighting that's part of some kind of public art installation, that seems like a, a good opportunity to include. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one here. So how about how about furnishings? So we've got obviously there are three different colors here. Um, but in addition, there's three slightly different styles of, um, of benches. Does anybody have an opinion of A, B, or C and, and why that is? I really liked Robert's idea from his earlier comments where it was a backless bench so that people have the option to sit either way, either facing the street or facing the sidewalk. Yep. Yeah, and all of these um, are were chosen because they're available in both backless and backed versions. Gotcha. All right, then I'll choose C. <laughs> um, I like options A and B, and uh, mainly for their durability. I mean, I think, um, you know, I also wonder, I mean, I know they don't come in match sets, but would we consider something like you know, a granite bench or something like that that isn't going to, you know, rust over time or sort of wear out or wear down in the same way that, you know, a sort of, you know, a less durable bench might. Anybody who hasn't spoken yet want to chime in? Oh, I'll chime in. I'll, I'll say that the I say that the uh, planters and the most most obviously the trash cans with the flared tops take up a lot of room on this on the street and like we have those in downtown Florence now and and they become an obstacle in the sidewalk that take up a, have a much larger presence than they need to have and I would like to see um, a single stream trash uh, the, or, Definitely some sort of matching recy receptacles because what we have now is very unattractive as far as our recycling uh, partner to our trash receptacles. Um, and that the recycling should be more controlled that it can't, we're having people that live in downtown putting their household recyclables in our recycling bins at this point. Right, so there's a, a management challenge there. Um, so how about Pennington, Caleb, Ed, Martha, John, John? Anybody else want to chime in on these? Rich? I, I like the idea also of the, um, the backless benches um, and the, um, the more durable metal ones. I like the, the rounded sides. I think that's more aesthetically pleasing. Um, I will add that also talking about the, the parklets, I'm just going back to your, your previous one. Yeah, um, yeah. I like the, the curved design. I like the idea that there's seating where you're not having to face the street. You can be facing in towards the, the planting areas. Um, and a feature that, that we found at Cooper's is just having that water feature has yeah, become yeah. such a hit. You know, it's just, it's very soothing. A lot of people like that, if there's a way to incorporate that into other uh, parklets, I think that would be a big help. Thank you. And, yeah. and I'll chime in back on the parklet idea also. Um, it would be great if the parklets could be in kind of a neutral place, not tied to a commercial establishment. Right now, there's kind of quasi parklets in front of Cooper's, in front of the Tandem Bagel Deli. Um, in front of the little ice cream parlor, there's a bench. There was a bench in front of Florence Diner, but I often felt like you had to purchase something from those stores in order to sit there. And other than that, there aren't really any other places to kind of hang out. So if we can locate some of these parklets in a neutral spot, that would be great. Right. Yeah. I mean, one way of, one way of flipping that comment on is that the, the, the businesses are doing a good job of providing places for people to sit. Um, and so it would be great if there was more public investment um, possible. Yes, I'd like to add kudos to Rich Cooper for actually creating a terrific downtown parklet out of his own pocketbook. 
I second that. Okay. I'll jump in with a comment. Uh, I just wanted to say in general, um, I appreciate what you guys have been doing. Um, overall, uh, I think my preference for most of the options is the, the stuff that's kind of the more traditional that takes cues from the existing architecture in Florence Center. I like the, the pendant lighting, the metal benches, uh, those sorts of things. Um, and I also just mentioned, I know it was a little bit of a tangent from this, um, but as somebody who rides my bike for transportation every day, um, I'm in and out of Florence Center, uh, stopping in to run errands and everything. Um, I think it would be uh, a huge mistake to pursue eliminating on-street parking uh, in favor of some sort of bike lane because I don't think it's the right setting for a bike lane. Um, and I think that the on-street parking is the best traffic calming that we have there. Um, so although it's something that's a little bit counterintuitive from, uh, from that approach, I, I definitely think that uh, keeping the on-street parking and, and not trying to pursue some sort of quasi-bike lane would be, I, I don't think that would be a good option. Um, but I do like uh, the discussion that was going about uh, delineating the, the sidewalks uh, as much as possible and, and you know, making sure that people are conscious of, of the transition there. Uh, when they're pulling in and out. Okay, we move on to our last one here. Um, so lighting, I heard Caleb just say that he prefers the, the pendant style, A. Is there anybody who, pr who prefers C? No. No, I think that's going in the wrong direction for Florence. David Whitehill, you raised your hand. I have no comments on lighting. Okay. I, I just want to clarify for everyone that um, I think picking sort of or stating general directions of design might make sense, but I, I wouldn't want anybody to think that. Um, this is the thing that's going to get picked <laughs> for Florence Center. I mean, we don't know when the lighting is going to be changed. By the time we get there, all the spec books are going to be different. So I just want everyone to keep in mind that this is just sort of a general concept and you're not really picking a standard fixture. Well, I'm wondering if there's, we talked about adding pedestrian lighting and along with the Cobra lighting, if there's a fixture that we could replace the Cobra lighting with, which has outlived its usefulness at this point. I know we put new LED heads on it recently, but those were installed in 1988 um, that actually had both types of lighting in the same pole. And that's where the electric source comes from. As we have underground utilities in Florence, it's probably going to be very difficult to add additional lighting in the streetscape without a complete redesign. I guess a, a semi-answer to that is, is the uh, pendant lighting is very common as a replacement for at a higher out, you know, a higher elevation for um, replacing pendant lights or as an alternative. You see them a lot and in Amherst as street lighting. So. All right. And then just our final question. I'm is just, is this important for Florence? Does it matter if the streetscape in Florence is improved? I see a two thumbs up from Chris Tate. I, th I think the fact that we're all here probably uh, speaks to that. So that's some support for Caleb, from Caleb. Thumbs up from Rich Cooper. All right. Um, well, that concludes and our part of this. I, I would like to say something. Amen. Yes. This wasn't about lighting. Um, I mean, I think you guys have done a wonderful job with what you were charged to do. All kinds of things here at the moment. Um, 
sorry. So I'm watching a, a presentation by the city on my computer. Should we let Ed speak? Is that Ed? Ed. Oh, there we go. Um, I know there were a lot of like uh, guardrails around what you were charged to look at and what you weren't supposed to look at, and it's a state designated route, and there's all kinds of things. Um, I think there's just we've heard a few of the citizens of our beautiful city uh, sort of point us towards like, wait, what about like these bigger issues? And I, I know there's like reasons why some of these things weren't looked at, but I think it's important to just point out a few things. One is this bike path that we have running like quite extensively through our region at this point is such a huge amenity that to do any of this stuff, all these things are good things. Like every page, oh, that's beautiful, pretty, you know, cute bench. Everything is at the cost of something else that we could do. And if we could, like, I take my kids on the bike path to Florence all the time, and it's awesome on the bikeway, and then it's like life or death as soon as you go past the hardware store. It's horrible. And I would give up any of these cute things for like a better connection to the bikeway. So to say, oh, it's a bigger planning thing, it's not. Like, there's costs, there's, you know, money is fungible. Um, we have two triangular shaped parks at either end of. Florence Center that are in such depressing states of disrepair. So the idea that the city would be taking on more, making more park space that they would then like leave that in a state of disrepair seems to me like missing the boat. Like there's a nice park that's between the library and Tandem Bagel. that's like one of the scarier places to hang out. Let's put the money there. Like we have a park. <laughs> um, I don't know why I would ever like take my kids to hang out in front of the bank you know like i don't get it so i understand like you're looking at specific things i just think like i wouldn't i i wouldn't like want to say that i support any of this stuff because it's all money that's not being spent on things that i think are better uses of money that would really improve florence more than some of this stuff i mean some of that like again every one image is fine it's like i wouldn't say no to it if it was some it was like Santa brought it or something, but you know, there's, I think there's more important things that are just not in the scope here um, at all. Um, so. Um, if I know the planning board probably has other things on its agenda. I think that's a really interesting conversation to have. I'd be willing to stick around for it, but I don't know if that's what's on the docket tonight. The question of like what's most important to do in Florence. So I'm going to leave that to George or Carolyn to determine whether that's for tonight's meeting or not. I would say that's probably a bigger conversation for a different meeting. Okay. Invite me when it happens. And I'll come at a citizen villain. All right, um, so that, that's it for us tonight. Um, thank you all for, for coming and for your great comments. Thank you very much, Dylan and Nate, for that presentation. It was great, and thanks for everybody who came in. I, I know a lot of these folks have been involved in many discussions about Florence, not only the past five years, but the past 15 and 20 years. So um, change happened slowly, for sure. Well, let's hope we can get some of this low hanging fruit going up there. Okay. Well, then we do have just a couple of other kind of uh, housekeeping items to do tonight. Uh, or else do, do we need any kind of action on this, Carolyn? Do we want to make a recommendation on this vision? Um, you know, you don't have to do anything tonight. You can sit on it. You can do another another meeting. I, I want to also note that, you know, this isn't going to be like a plan element it, um, a, incorporated into sustainable Northampton. Again, it's sort of an um, off the shelf thing. We actually, Wayne pulled down off the shelf um, a plan that DPW did for downtown Northampton from 2003 that was used as streetscape improvement that helped um, sort of uh, guide DPW in purchasing items, you know, trash cans and um, other streetscape um, furniture. 
So um, it really can be something that you all, and also this sort of needs to be finalized. There were some comments um, tonight that maybe make sense to sort of think about and whether they're, they should be in, inserted or um, looked at. So, you know, this was sort of the, maybe the penultimate um, <laughs> draft or something like that. So I don't think you need to take action tonight necessarily, but it'd be good to have another time since it's um, quite late, another time to sort of have a conversation about it. And great, thank you very much. But um, just to reiterate, there are a couple of things that are gonna be happening, some physical things in Florence mm -hmm. Center that people should be aware of, right? There's gonna be new signage put up yeah. on Main it's Street and also on the bike path. Yep. kind of wayfinding things yeah um i don't think any any tree uh amenities are going to be added quite yet no there are there There's are about okay. six maybe seven tree pits that are with with construct with um um uh soil um i'm sorry i'm losing my <laughs> words here um Soil, um, um, special soils for urban settings are going to be um, uh, put in these tree pits. And then Rich Parcelletti, the city's tree warden, will come in with volunteers at some later point. So it's all going to be set up for those trees to be planted at some later point. So those tree pits, um, there'll be some uh, benches, um, crosswalk improvements. So there are a series of things that are happening imminently. Um, and then the rest of it is sort of longer term vision. Um, and of course, you know, we got some good comments about, should we take the step further? One of the tree pits we've talked about installing is at that dental practice, but it's at the corner. But, you know, there's been some conflict with the property owner who is concerned about losing parking spaces, but they're on the public right of way. So, you know, we need to sort of figure out what are we going to do there. Um, so yes, those are the things that are coming now. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. So any last comments by the planning board on these Florence visions before? We I guess on? I just want to. I guess I want a clarification from Carolyn. It sounds like pieces of this are happening, or they're in progress, or they're going to happen. Like, what do we actually ever need to, I mean, do we have to do anything with this? this is this kind of a public forum? Like, here's what's going on, really, right? Right. Okay, you don't fine. have to do anything. You could vote to endorse it and say, hey, this is a great plan. We, we like the way this is going. And so, yes, when there's funding opportunities, this is a good thing to use. To, but it's it's not binding one way. If we don't yeah. say it, it might still happen. If we do say it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? I mean, it's not, a, it's sort of like we all like it or something. Okay, got it. Thank you. It's not binding, but it gets pulled off the shelf in the future that this was the vision of Florence. It happens again and again, like, oh, don't you remember people wanted more public art? So here it is. Um, without it really being nailed down in specifics, it does, it ends up a little loosey goosey. It could be a resource when you're reviewing projects, if you're asking for public improvements. Yeah, I think we're, we'll really come in handy is when we are looking at new developments, commercial developments, residential developments that are happening in that um, private space that's butting up against the public space. Um, and I'm sure Robert, you and other people very invested in Florence will be there to, uh, you know, make sure that <clears throat> the city, the planning board, the applicant is held to some of those visions, even though there's never a consensus on exactly what the hardware or that vision might be. It was before my time on the planning board, but was that a crosswalk bump out by Cumberland Farms? Was that associated with the project, the redevelopment of that parcel? Cumberland Farms? Yeah. All righty. Very good. Thanks again, everyone. Um, so, Carolyn, I think we just had three sets of meetings, a minute, minutes from three meetings that we wanted to review and uh, approve. Yep. Bye, Dylan. Bye, Nate. Thank you.
so let's see, we had minutes from, February and March. Two in, Fe two in uh, March and one in February? Uh -huh. Okay. Is there a, a motion that folks have, Carolyn, for them to us a few, a week or so ago? Hopefully folks had a chance to look at them, pick out any typos. I did, I missed one of the meetings, so, and I was marked as missed it, so that's great. Um, so if there's not any discussion on those minutes, is there a motion to accept them? I'll move to accept all three sets of meeting minutes before us this evening. Is there a second? Uh, a second. Thanks, David. So the motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? I have a, I have a comment that uh, it's not regarding the minutes other than uh, on the March 24th, I should have said at the end of that meeting that Melissa deserves some sort of special commendation from the city for chairing that meeting. <laughs> That's fun. Put that in the minutes for this meeting. <laughs> yep. No, and I, I noted that because I wasn't at that meeting, but when I read through it, and which Carolyn parsed out kind of nicely, I can tell that that must have been a little bit difficult, not only for Melissa, but for um, the folks speaking and the folks in attendance. Yeah. So thanks, Melissa, for stepping into the breach. No problem. All right, so the motion's been made and seconded um, for the three minutes. And so we'll go to a, a roll call. Uh, David? Yep. And Melissa? Yes. Chris? Yes. All right, and George, so unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, David, I, wanna, I, I, I also wanna appreciate the comment you made about the two parks at either end of Florence, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think they both deserve a little bit more exploration and- Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, Carolyn, like what is the, like, I assume Dodson and Flickr don't show up and say, hey, we have this study we're doing of, I mean, like we, there's some process for deciding what the studies they're doing are. Like, it seems to me like connections from the bikeway to Florence would be like a huge, like low hanging fruit. Like the way that East Hampton is like connected so well, you know, I mean, it seems like Florence would do really well to do something like that. How do we get them to do that? So <laughs> they, uh, you may, they did not focus on this very much, um, but on the East end connecting to, um, Trinity Row Park, the, the idea is to make that crosswalk safer um, and connect to that park and also cross the street there. So that's one um, step in that direction. Going back pre-shutdown, um, when we sort of first started this process, there was a lot of conversation about the park on the West End. Yep. How do we make that connection and then leapfrog over to the library, right? And the Civic Center. So we embarked, we had some money to do um, um, like tactical urbanist type of stuff in the street um, that summer, I think it was. I'm losing all sense of time. Yep. Um, but the idea was what do we, what about closing in that? you know, cut off the, the, I'm sorry, the slip lane, essentially the two lane slip lane that goes from Park Street and merges into Route 9 and then into that signal. So there was a lot of conversation about that because that would then bring the park into right. um, that block. sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was some pushback for doing this, uh, you know, just testing it, doing a test case of like painting the street for the summer um so it looks like you know and redirecting traffic to just that t intersection where park and route nine comes so dpw really wanted more study about what that would do to traffic there was a lot of pushback from residents mm -hmm. in florence about the change the altering traffic patterns so it has been part of the conversation i don't i i agree with you i think I was, I actually felt like that was a really exciting project and thing to think about, about sort of pulling that park into the sidewalk. 
um, or even doing other things like making it um, narrower, just making the lane so it's clearly one lane of traffic coming off a park and merging in. Um, but we just, that would take a little bit more time and money to design. So I would, I would say maybe it makes sense to sort of regenerate that, you know, those ideas and sort of think more about how we can maybe involve DPW and think about a more detailed design about that piece. Right. I mean, I, I just brought that up because that park, I did have lunch in that park recently and it was so, you know, it's it's just missing a few heroin needles, you know, it's like you sort of expect to see them. But the, uh, I mean, the fact is like, if, if like the paint store, there. if Lawrence paint store was taken over by someone with like a pie bar kind of idea, like it suddenly you have like a zone by the bikeway that is far more interesting and pedestrian friendly than anything on Main Street. It's just like, I feel like there's just like a little bit of broader thinking about what this place could be because Florence has a lot of potential. It's already great, honestly. And I think, I don't know, like, I don't, maybe it's a generational thing when I see like powder coated little flags and stuff, it just feels very like 1990s and like lame and old to me, but other people <laughs> like it. So I don't know, <laughs> but Florence, you know, I don't know. Like, I, it just seems like there's a little more like broad, exciting things that might happen other than like making it the perfect main street, you know? Um, that was my, but I, I don't know, like, I know you have a longer history with this process, that, um, so I defer to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and I, again, I think we should really be able to leverage the bike path being so close to town to, you know, take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that connection from the bike path to Main Street instead of maybe Main Street proper itself? Like how do we, mm -hmm. and it sounds like maybe with the signage and some wayfinding, I mean, that helps, um, but also yeah. just making it way more palatable to people on the bike path to get off the bike path and get onto mm -hmm. Main Street. Mm -hmm. So much of that comes down to the investment, the uh, holding on to parking, I, even on those side streets of Kai Street and North Maple, North when Maple, you come by yeah. the hardware store, Mm -hmm. That's where a bike lane would be good right. on either one of those. Yep. But to to do that, I think you'd have to remove a set of uh, parallel parking spots. Um, and uh, right. that, that you're into a big fight there with. Um, yep. yep. Bring them on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I know we have some other advocates around. Well, folks, um, thank you very much. Great meeting. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn at nine o'clock? Is there any That's other so business? Moved. So moved. Second. Great. Second. All right. Any discussion? We'll go to a voice vote. Uh, David? Yep. And uh, Melissa? Yes. Great. And Chris? Yes. And George votes unanimously. All right.